Hey guys, this is Professor Bood coming to you from Madagascar, and today we're going to talk about recrystallization. Recrystallization is a cool process, and it is actually, for those of you familiar with uh, the show Breaking Bad, is actually used in the show uh, multiple times as they are trying to recrystallize uh, methamphetamine, which is an illegal drug for those of you that don't know that. Hopefully everyone knows that. But anyway, um, here is them about to do a recrystallization on this liquid sample. Uh, here is a real recrystallization of a real meth lab. And here is real recrystallized methamphetamine. Um, so, let's talk about how you can make meth at home. No, not really, but let's talk about recrystallization. Um, so, the technique is basically, there are only two real problematic steps, and one is getting a good solvent to recrystallize your sample because that's going to be very important and then getting the crystals to form so basically the whole thing is difficult um, but let's let's talk about what you essentially have to do so the first step is going to be to find a good recrystallizing solvent and so to do so you're going to have to run little trials um, of, of your sample with with these different solvents, and remember, you're going to grab, you're going to go and grab a uh, an unknown. So that's going to be your sample, and we're going to have, I believe, five different uh, solvents that you're going to try out. And what you're looking for is this little bit right here. You're looking for a solvent which is very insoluble at low temperatures and highly soluble at elevated temperatures. The reason for that is you essentially want your solvent to be able to fully dissolve, or your compound to be able to fully dissolve into your solvent, and then to be able to recrystallize at room temperature. So, you essentially dissolve your sample. We are going to skip steps three and four, but you would normally decolorize and filter out hot impurities uh, by using activated charcoal, which is basically like a Brita filter. Um, so just uh, as, as your compound moves through there, any sort of impurities will be picked up by the charcoal. This is called adsorption, as an AD sorption. Um, you're then going to crystallize your sample, and to do that, you're just going to essentially let the the um, uh, the solvent uh, dissolve or not dissolve, evaporate. Um, and then you're going to dry your sample. And those are, those are essentially the basic steps that you're going to have to follow in order to do this. So you're going to have to also look at this, this characteristics of a good recrystallizing solvent for the first step because it's important to find the right solvent. And so there are a few things like, you know, the solvent should boil between these temperatures. Um, don't use explosive compounds or toxic compounds or expensive compounds. Um, and don't use anything that would chemically react with your sample, but you don't know what your sample is, so we're kind of limited here. Anyhow, um, there are a couple extra troubleshooting tips in the lab manual, um, and yeah, so if you just look under commonly occurring problems and recrystallizations and possible solutions, it walks you through a few, a few little uh, tips and tricks. Okay, so let's go to our procedure. So we're going to make a warm bath, um, we're going to add water and heat it up, and we're going to insert a thermometer and try to get the temperature to about 70 degrees. Um, in the meantime, we will have uh, five samples, or we will separate out five, sam five little samples of your unknown, and you're going to test it out with, fi with five different solvents that we're going to have. Um, and I believe the solvents are, it says somewhere here, yeah, here we go. Water, ethanol, ethyl acetate, heptane, and toluene. So remember, you're looking for something that dissolves fully at about 70 degrees and about and basically doesn't dissolve at room temperature. So uh, you're going to test each of these solvents by adding uh, one milliliter of your solvent to about 0.05 grams. Uh, and where does that say? Yeah, 0.05 grams of your unknown. You're going to add one milliliter of your solvent. So then, you know, any solvent that completely dissolves the solid at room temperature can be eliminated uh, as a possible solvent for recrystallization. Because remember, at room temperature, you want it to be um, completely undissolved. 
and at a high and at an elevated temperature you want it to be completely dissolved so you're going to try all five of those and see which one works best and then move forward with that particular solvent um, once you uh, once you have your, your recrystal or your um, solvent that you're going to use to dissolve, uh, you can you can go on to the next step. And let's see, are there any parts that are important in here? So you might need a second uh, solvent, but it's it's pro it's highly unlikely that you'll need a second solvent. You might need to mix two solvents though. It is possible. So then you're going to uh, once you fully dissolve your sample you're going to want to recrystallize it. Um, so you're going to have a full, a full gram of your unknown and you're going to use that full gram and you're going to mix it with uh, and here it shows you the calculation but you know if we used 0.05 grams for 3 milliliters which we did not, we used 1 milliliter as, as we mentioned before uh, but this will allow you, this sort of calculation will allow you to find how much volume of your solvent you need for your full 1 gram of unknown. Um, then let's see. Yeah, so you're going to essentially then t take it into um, a graduated cylinder, uh, and you, the reason you want to use 50% is in case uh, this is you don't do it quite right. You want to have um, a little backup sample, so in case in case you messed it up, and so that you can can try it again. Um, so we're going to then form crystals uh, by essentially letting it slowly evaporate and you will filter your crystals um, so once so you'll collect your crystals then you're going to filter them and the filter setup is shown right here so you're going to essentially once all your crystals are dry you're going to pour them into this little filtration device and you're going to have this connected it says here to a vacuum trap but we're actually just going to use the movement of water to create a vacuum. Um, so that's going to be your vacuum and essentially what this is going to do is create a small vacuum in here and allow uh, any sort of extra solvent that you pour because we're going to need to rinse these. So you're, any extra solvent that you pour on top of your crystals to just be pulled through right here and nicely and quickly dry your crystals. So um, once that is done you're just going to let them dry out and then we're going to test the melting points to see what sort of uh, unknown we might have. And that is basically our lab. You're going to calculate your percent recovery, kind of like how we did last week. Um, so this is kind of a similar experiment from last week, but it's a different, a different technique that we're using this week. We're using recrystallization instead of uh, instead of liquid liquid recovery. So. Hopefully that helps you guys out, and if you have any questions, send me an email. See you soon.